right now watching this, I want you to look into my eyes. I want you to feel this. You were born with everything that you need. It's It's been inside of you since birth. You have it right now, no matter where you are in your life. If you hate your job, if you're unfulfilled, if you're upset, if you're sad, if you hate uh, you know, your circumstances right now, inside of you, at this very moment, no matter how low you are, you have exactly what you need to succeed. You've always had it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joey C. I am a seven-figure Amazon seller, and I am the creator of Private Label Liberation. It's a, an online education system that I've created in order to help people to grow a six- to seven-figure Amazon business within their first year selling. And in this video, what I want to do is I really want to talk about my personal journey because I think that it's it's so many of us that are going through something similar as far as why we would want to get into Amazon or why we're looking to make money online or looking for something else in general, right? And I think that my story is really, um, it's its typical across so many different people and, and, and people's situations and so many people that I talk to even had the same problems that I have. And that's, you know, being uncontent at your job, feeling that you're bored at work, you hate your job, you hate punching in and punching out, you're living paycheck to paycheck, or you're just not fulfilled with what you're doing. And that was exactly what I was feeling every single day. And it's what drove me in a different direction. So I just want to talk about my whole timeline, go through my story on my channel as well. If you look through my videos, I have an entire, it's like a two hour interview from my student success interview when I was with uh, Private Label Masters. And I go through basically everything on that interview as well. Um, but the, really the big thing that I want to touch on is that, you know, your, your story, your path, right, is meant for you. You're going through it because of something. You're going through it so that it develops you into the person that you're supposed to be, the, 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 the things that you're supposed to accomplish, right? That's why we go through our journeys. Each journey is particular to the person, right? It's particular to you. I had to go through what I went through in order to be right here talking to you today, hopefully so that I can help you. Uh, help you. And it's the same thing with you. You know, the things you're going through, the things you may be experiencing, we need to welcome these things because if we let it, it will change us to exactly the person that we need to be, right? To help us achieve the things that we need to achieve and then hopefully help someone else that may be in your exact same spot. I believe that's the full circle uh, thing. You know, we don't go and achieve and, and create so that we can hoard and keep it all to ourselves. We're supposed to share these things with each other and help one another so that, you know, people in other circumstances or, or situations similar to yours, you can show them how to get out as well as you did. That's why I named my, my course Private Label Liberation because I liberated myself from the nine to five. There's so many other people that want to liberate themselves from their work, from the chains of money, from bad relationships, whatever it is, we need to liberate ourselves from certain things that are holding us down and then be able to step into that greatness that we were born with from day one. And so I hope this story inspires you. I hope it shows you that we want to welcome these things. I believe that life happens for us. It does not happen to us. And we should welcome these gifts because it's trying to change you. The universe, God, whatever you believe in is trying to change you into the person that you're supposed to be so that you'll have the strength to walk down that path. Because right now, as you are, you may not have the skills, you may not have the, the discipline, you may not have the strength to continue to walk the way that you'll need to walk You know, when you start that business, when you leave a toxic relationship, when you, you try to learn something new. You may not have those skills yet, and what's happening now is that it's building that character in you so that when you go to walk that path, it'll be easy, and that person that you become will be able to accomplish because you were made for that, right? So these are the skills. Everything is building us, and that's what we need to focus on. That's what I hope you focus on throughout this story. So everything started back in 2016 for me. Prior to that, I did everything that I was told, right? Go to school, get good grades, get a good job, work there for a long time. Hopefully you climb up the corporate ladder and then life is going to be great. It's going to be comfortable, right? All of these words that we hear so much. But what I started to experience was that these were not happening for me, right? All of the upside wasn't happening. I got the good grades. I got the job. I did all the things I was supposed to do, but I wasn't experiencing the money. 
I wasn't experiencing the success. I wasn't experiencing the comfort. And in fact, it was the complete opposite side. I was experiencing pain. I was experiencing uh, worthlessness, that, that I wasn't happy with my job or my life. I was questioning, why am I even here? Because this is not something that I like doing. Was I, I was born to just work at this thing that I hate, not make enough money, really not live the life that I wanted to live. So why am I even here? It made me question myself and my capabilities. And I was just so unfulfilled. So when things started to not line up with what I was being taught my entire life, I started to ask questions. And unfortunately for myself and usually most people, we have to go through tremendous amounts of pain in order to finally make a, a switch or to pivot or to, you know, to ask new questions. And that's what happened to me. So I started wondering, well, if I was doing everything correctly, why aren't I getting the results that I should be getting? And, you know, it got to a point where, um, you know, basically 2016, I'll remember that that year for the rest of my life because it was my absolute rock bottom. And again, now looking back and I'll show you how I developed this mindset about how life it uh, happens for us, not to us. It was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. And it was the most painful. It was by far the worst year of my life. And I contemplated, uh, you know, suicide quite a bit, honestly. And, and, you know, I'm OK to be open with that because that's just the place I was in. It was the place I was in. And, and again, I know that it shaped me into moving forward and into to growing and now becoming this person that I am today simply by switching my mindset. So 2016, I didn't know, um, you know, my father's parents and I didn't have, uh, I don't have a huge family. So my grandmother and my grandfather on my mom's side, they were the closest things to me. And in 2016, my grandfather got sick in the beginning of the year and he passed away. That was the closest loss I've ever experienced as far as a loved one. Four months later to the day, my grandmother passed away as well. Um, and so I had two huge, huge losses during that year. Me and my girlfriend at the time also moved down to Texas. We are originally from Pennsylvania. We moved down to Texas uh, and we got to Austin. We wanted to, you know, hey, let's let's just go somewhere. Let's get out of here. We didn't get jobs. We just wanted to go down and we'll figure it out. You know, we both have, we're both smart. We both have resumes. We'll put them around but we need just a, a break, right? We thought that was the way to fix things is let's just leave and, and put ourselves in a different situation. But when we got down to Texas, it was incredible. It's just such an amazing city. But the problem was, is that I couldn't get a job to save my life. Uh, I put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications out and I got rejections or no responses from absolutely everybody. And this is something that happened to me as well, getting out of college is that I started putting my application around all over the place and I couldn't get a job to save my life. I had good grades, but the one thing I didn't have was experience and everybody wanted experience, but how do you get experience until you actually start, right? So I found myself in such a, that was one of the pivotal moments as well. It's like, well, everybody said go to school and get good grades, but the good grades didn't really matter. I needed experience. So how do, how do I get the experience unless somebody takes a, a bet on me, right? So I had a whole problem with that. I had to tail between my legs moment. I had to go to my father who did architecture and ask him for a job. I said, Hey, could I, you know, I need to, I need to start working. Can you help me out with a job? And he said, well, we have some draftsman positions open. He did architecture. Like I said, so we have a position open to do drafting and I didn't know anything about drafting. So I had to basically lock myself in a room for two weeks and I learned AutoCAD and some different things so that I can go and I can work there. And, um, you know, I started there out of school and I thought, all right, yeah, a couple of years are going to go by and I'll be out of here, right? I'll get all the experience I need and then I'm going to move up the ladder. Well, two years went by, three years went by, five years went by. And so I found myself in this situation that I thought was going to be temporary and it's starting to turn into a permanent solution, right? And I didn't really love this job. I, I actually hated my job. I didn't want to be there. It was, I felt and this was probably in my own head, but I felt like everybody looked at me like, yeah, this guy's dad just got him a job. He shouldn't really be here. He's not smart enough to be here. He's not good enough to be here. He's just here because of his father. So I had all of these horrible thoughts running through my head 24-7. Uh, you know, I felt judged. I just, I, it just was awful. Really, it was awful. And I wasn't making a lot of money at all. Um, you know, paycheck to paycheck was probably a, a good word for it. Maybe just a little bit over that. 
Um, but as years went on, I thought to myself, this is, this is just not going to work. And that's when I tried my first solution, which was moving, like I was talking about earlier. So, you know, we moved down to Texas, go to a different situation there. Same thing happened. Uh, uh, applications all over the place, trying to get jobs, you know, sh my resume, working on my resume. And I just absolutely couldn't uh, get a job to save my life. So much so, right, that that three months went by or so and I couldn't get a job the whole time. It actually depleted my entire bank account. So everything I worked for, for like six years at this job, everything I saved, I spent it in three months because I couldn't get another job and I had to come home again, another tail between my legs moment. So now things are just not starting to line up, right? I did all the right things. I saved money. That was another big aha moment for me. It's like, man, everything that I took me six years to save and I lost it in 90 days. I mean, I just, there's no way that that could be possible. There's no way that this is the way life is supposed to be. Right. So it was just a horrible, horrible time for me. But I had to end up and I tried as long as I can. I came back home, applied to more jobs, couldn't get a job. I had to put my tail back to my, uh, you know, between my legs a third time and go back to the office that I left in the first place. And I ended up staying there for another four years. So this takes us to 2016, like I was talking about. So I basically was completely depressed. I absolutely hated my job. I felt it was I was in a hopeless situation. Um, you know, it was like, the yeah, I knew you'd be back type of thing. Right. And I just remember sitting at my desk um, with my head in my hands. I wasn't even working, didn't care who saw me or, or what happened. Fire me. I basically was thinking, I don't really care. And I remember just being on the Internet and I was searching, you know, why am I here? What's the purpose of life? You know, things that would be alarming to most people if they were to see what I was looking for. But I didn't care who saw it because I again, I thought, well, get rid of me. So what? what's the worst that could happen? Just lost all my money. I just lost the two closest people that I had in my family, as far as my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, you know, I'm back at the place I thought I would never be in. Life looked really, really grim at that point for me. And I just thought, well, if this is how life is, I don't want to live it. And, you know, basically what I found online by searching some of those troubling things is I ran across Tony Robbins. And it was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me because I looked and I said, what is this, the guy from Shallow Hal, <laughs> the movie? I didn't even know who Tony Robbins was. So I started to Google him and I started to go through some of his material and I saw how he was speaking, the things he was talking about, about how you're in control of your life and the reason you are exactly where you are right now, the, the shoes you're standing in, right, that he would say, the, the exact point you are in your life is because of your decisions and your choices and the things that that you've done, right? Every single choice you've made in your life has taken you to this spot and you can change it by making new decisions, by making new choices and believing things that are different. You can completely change your life because you're 100% in control. Now, I've never heard of this type of thinking prior to that day and I remember thinking, oh my God, I was just so interested. I'm like, well, if that's the case, then then how, right? How How do I do that? What would I do? I saw that he had a UPW going on. This was in uh, November of 2016. It was in San Jose, California. And the UPW is Unleash the Power Within. And that's one of his events. It's a weekend event. You know, you're in the arena for like 14, 15 hours straight. And it's just a total immersion uh, with Tony Robbins. And, you know, I had about $1,000 left in my bank account. And that was it. And it was about seven or eight hundred dollars for the tickets and the round trip and the airfare, the hotel and everything like that. So it would basically completely wipe me out. But again, the headspace I was in, I was like, well, I don't care. I mean, if this guy could tell me one thing, one thing that could maybe change my life or help me with this situation, because I am I hate it so much, then it'll be worth it. Right. So I said, well, what's it's just money. I don't care. Like I was just in that I don't care attitude. And I booked it. And it was in like three weeks, you know, so I was sitting up in the nosebleeds and all that stuff. And it was, um, you know, I basically had like $200 left to my name. And I said, well, well, I'll just figure it out. So what? Who cares? And when I got on that plane and when I went to that event, the, everything changed. My entire life changed from one weekend event. And honestly, if it wasn't, I could say if it wasn't for Tony Robbins, I wouldn't even be here today. I wouldn't be standing here today. I have no idea what I would be doing. I certainly wouldn't be making the money that I'm making today. And so I feel 
that I should absolutely give him credit for that because it was just the most life-changing thing. The biggest thing going through that entire event was basically the understanding that you are in complete and total control over your life. That most people sleepwalk their way through life. They're in the car, right? What you're doing, your life is designed for you. And it's like you're in your own vehicle. It's you're in your own car. Now, most people, all they do at birth, you just put your foot on the gas, right? And we're just moving forward because regardless, you can't ever go backwards, right? You could change lanes. You could go, you know, do what the things you need to do side to side, but you're always moving forward because that's where time goes. No matter what, you're always going forward. So you have your feet on the gas, but nobody picks their hands up and just puts their hands on the wheel so that they could steer their own vehicle. And once you do that, once you take control of your own car, you can choose to do whatever you want. You can design the life that you want. Now, the biggest uh, like moment for me was actually walking out of there because I walked in there one way and I was a complete wreck. I wanted to kill myself. I had you know, horrible depression, anxiety, everything that you could think of I had going in there. But I came out of there a completely different person and nothing changed in the physical world. I was still broke. I still hated my job. I still, you know, lost everything. I still didn't know what I was going to do, but I was a completely and totally different person. And I was a different person because I changed my mindset. That was it. So it was the greatest moment of my life. And I just, I just felt like the top blew off and it was like, man, if I could do that, I could do anything. I was completely on fire for life again. I was just ready to go out there and grab my wheel with two hands and start doing the things that I knew that I could do. So I came back and that's why I say that one of the biggest lessons I learned from him was that life doesn't happen to you. Life happens for you. If it wasn't for all those pains, if it wasn't for all of the losses, and if it wasn't for, you know, all of the, the, the struggles, I would have never searched for Tony Robbins. I would have never went there and I would have never did the things I needed to do in order to become the man that I am today. Right. And I certainly wasn't done with my failures either, as I'm, you'll hear in a few minutes. But that was such a huge thing for me. So I came back and I came back on fire. I started doing new searches. Right. How how to make money online. That was one of the big ones that that set me off into the Amazon world. But, you know, uh, you know how, how I was just on fire for learning. So I figured, OK, if everything prior to that event, that that gave me a horrible life. I hated my life. I didn't like it at all. How do I just do the complete opposite of those things? And then I'm going to start being different. I'll start making different choices. So I used to go out on the weekends every single weekend, Friday, Saturday with my friends to go drink and to just kind of do the weekend life. I said, okay, I'm absolutely done with that because if I was doing that, so instead of going out, I'm not going out. I spent 50 to $100 every single weekend on alcohol. So what I started to do was spend 50 to $100 every single weekend on books. And I'm sure you could see my library back there because one thing he said from Jim Rohn is that the more you learn, the more you earn. And it just takes one thing, one quote, one poem, one thing that you read in a book to completely open the floodgates of your mind and change your life. And so I was on a mission to find that one thing that just opened up my floodgates because I knew that the life I wanted was right on the other side of one of those pages. And so I took doing the same thing. I used to spend that money. Instead of spending it on alcohol, I spent it on books. And my time, instead of spending my time on things that didn't serve me, I started spending my time on learning, on things that I could build, skills, reading, being with people that I love instead of being with toxic people. I rearranged my entire life, but that's what led me to Amazon FBA. I started seeing the opportunity of how you can sell items on Amazon. You don't have to have them at your house. Basically, Amazon lets you piggyback on top of their business that's already built it's a trillion dollar business. They're going to do everything for you, but all you have to do is bring good products to the market. And so I knew the opportunity was huge. And another thing that I, I learned at Tony Robbins was role modeling and that success leaves clues. So if it's somebody has probably done the thing that you want to do before. So if you just find a person that's actually done it, you could follow in their shoes and you're going to be able to achieve the same type of success. There's a system. And so what I started doing was looking for mentors. I was sold on the idea. I thought it was just so brilliant. And I heard about the third party selling system. And also in the book, uh, Good to Great and Jeff Bezos's book, um, The Everything Store, 
they talk about the Amazon flywheel. And the Amazon flywheel is actually how Amazon achieved such exponential growth by opening up the third-party selling system so other people could come onto the platform in order to sell their products to grow Amazon's product base. So if they were talking about it, I knew that this was a real thing. And so what I did was I jumped into my first course, I dove in head first and uh, started to learn as much as I can. And the problems were, is that I jumped into courses and this is gonna be my first two courses that I went through on Amazon. What I was looking for because I was so new is I was looking for uh, the flash, right? A lot of people, I'm sure you always see the people driving Lamborghinis and they're outside of mansions and they're saying all this stuff. And the problem was is that those people had what I wanted to have, but they weren't doing the thing that I wanted to do, right? And you, if you're finding a mentor of any kind, that person needs to have done or is doing the thing that you want to do. They have to have the system. They have to achieve the result that you want, not just have the fancy things that you want to have, but they, sh they should have achieved that result. And so I went through my first course, did everything that I, they said to do. I launched, I launched my first product and I ended up, it ended up failing. So I ended up losing $5,000 on my first product because it was completely wrong. Now, looking back, that product was what we call a me too product. It was exactly the same as everybody else. There was no differentiation, no value added. It was a gimmicky product. So there was just so many things wrong with it now that I know. So I figured, all right, I'm not going to let this get me down. Failure is what breeds success. You know, I keep knocking me down. I'm going to keep getting back up. So I ended up buying a second program. Now, mind you, these first two programs were very cheap programs. So at first you think that you're saving money, but in the long run, you'll see how much money, unfortunately, I actually spent. So I jump into my second product, uh, my my second course, and I you know believe that this guy knows more about what he's doing. I'm I'm just resilient. I said, okay, I'm absolutely going through this. I need to figure this out. And so I end up going through um, that course, and I launch two different products now under that course because I found two opportunities. I bring them to the mentor because the mentor says, you know, hey, you can bring those products to me and we'll we'll validate them for you. Brought them to the mentor, he says, yes, absolutely, these look good, you should definitely launch them. And so I end up launching those products and to my amazement, both products are bad products, right? One of those products was uh, topical, it was a beauty product, creams and different things like that. You need to have FDA approvals. You need to uh, get ungated in those categories. So all of the mistakes I made, I realize now. And the uh, the second product I launched with that was a seasonal product. So what I was seeing when I was doing my research was a big spike in sales, but I saw a very small window. I didn't see the whole window about how we look at the whole picture. I saw a small sales bump, but I didn't realize that the rest of the year, it's going to be dead in the water. And so I was way too late to the party. And again, now that was my third product. All three failed. I spent $5,000 on each one. So that's $15,000 now. I'm in the hole, right? So I am completely distraught. I think that, you know, I didn't have that money to lose. And I thought that, again, here we go. My life is over. What am I going to do? Now, if you think things got bad, <laughs> they always get worse before they get better. So what happened is I ended up getting an email from Amazon saying that you are not allowed to sell anymore on the platform because of the malicious activity that has been going on in your account. And you are banned from selling on Amazon for the rest of your life, basically. And I was like, oh, my God, what happened? What, what did I do? What, what happened? So what I find out later on is that I was doing something called review manipulation. And it's against Amazon's terms of service. There are rules and regulation to sell on Amazon and I had no clue and I wasn't aware of these things because that's what I was being taught. I was being taught to ask other people for reviews and do different things that are all black hat tactics, um, you know, as far as trying to get your product rank and stuff like that. And Amazon caught me and they shut my account down. And so another defining moment for me, this was in uh, like late 2017, early 2018. And I remember thinking, I'm dead. I'm done. I, I have no way to repay this money. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Amazon, but that was my ticket out of this job, right? It was everything that I worked for. It was my ticket out. How am I going to turn this around? What am I going to be able to do? Uh, you know, I, I'm never going to be able to quit my job now. This was such a great opportunity and I can't do it, right? So I started feeling like a victim again. I started getting down on myself. And I remember getting up out of the chair, especially when I got banned, 
and I was at work and I walked over to my dad's office and I closed the door and I sat down in the chair right next to his office and I just remember losing it. I just started bawling my eyes out because I had no idea what I was going to do, how I was going to fix it. I had lost so much money and I just felt completely defeated. Um, and unfortunately, the next couple of days after that, I was just, you know, I, I think I called off a day or two of work. I, I didn't want to do everything. I was in a complete state of depression. But luckily, I had gone to that Tony Robbins uh, seminar because what happened next was I started to hear the voices in my head. But instead of hearing the bad voices in my head about why I can't do it, why I'm a loser, why I'm not smart enough, why this will never work, why it's for other people, but it's not for me. I started to hear the voices that you're in control of your life. You can do anything that you put your mind to. Obstacles arise so that you can be stronger because of them. You know, um, it, this isn't that this can't be the, the the only way to do it. And this isn't you're not the first person that this ever happened to. You have to figure it out. If there's a will, there's a way. And so what I did is I started Googling on online about all these things. And I thought, man, right. I can't be the only person in history of Amazon that this has happened to. How do I figure this out? And so I found a company called eGrowth Partners and they do Amazon suspensions. It's a group of lawyers and all they work on is Amazon suspensions. And so I gave them a call and they said, man, this is the worst we've ever seen. All of the different stuff that you did, this is absolutely horrible. It's like a 50-50 shot. Maybe you get your account back. Maybe you don't. I honestly have no idea. And they said, and if we, it, you know, I can't guarantee anything, but it'd be $2,500 for our services. And so I was already 15K in the hole. So I dished out another 2,500 bucks because I thought I have to, I have to figure this out. I, ha I have to at least try it. I can't, I can't go on knowing that I didn't try everything. So three months went by emails back and forth, but they were finally able to get my Amazon account back up and running. And I was thrilled. I thought, all right, let's go. This is perfect. I get one more chance at this. My account is open. I know I could do this. Like the dream is still alive type of thing. Right. And so what I started doing is, is I said, okay, now I understand why I failed before. And I, I understand the type of mentors that I was looking into. So now how do I find you know, somebody that that knows how to do this. I know that this somebody has this figured out because Amazon talks about it. I see other sales numbers and stuff like that. How do I figure this out? So I slowed down and I started doing some more research. I started looking on YouTube and I ended up finding uh, a seller. And so what he did every time I saw him was he went into his pocket. He got his phone. He went into his Amazon account and he actually showed his live sales. I thought, there it is. There it is. If somebody could show their sales, that means he's doing it right now, right? He's got to know what he's doing. I've never seen that before. How come I never saw somebody show his sales before? And so I ended up, uh, you know, jumping into that course. He didn't even have a course out yet, but I thought, okay, I need to get to work because I'm in a pretty big hole here. So what I started to do was think, okay, how am I going to be able to make this money back? I work from eight to five or eight to six every single day. So how can I start, uh, you know, to make more money? And and I remember everybody always saying the things I was reading, especially personal development, they talk about, you know, your time can never be attached to your money. And you never sell time for money. But I thought, well, I don't have anything else to sell. I All I have is my time and my two hands. You know, The Rock talks about that a lot. As long as, as, as I have my two hands, I could get to work with these two hands. I said, so that's what I'm going to do. So what's the best job that I could work nights and weekends and different things like that in order to make money? that bartending. So there's a casino that's that's near my house. It's about 10 minutes away. I thought, all right, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go apply to be a bartender so that I could work nights and weekends and I could make money and get tips and stuff like that so that I can start saving in order to put it into my Amazon business to fuel my dreams, right? This was the big thing for me. My whole life I was working. All, my, all I did at work was work for a means to my means. Right. But what I realized is that you need to work for a means to your end. You can't work for a means to your means because that you're just going to be stagnant your whole life. It's going to be a, 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 a constant circle of what you're going through. But I needed a means to my end. And it, it, it really had me get a, a, a solid why of why I wanted to do this, because I needed I craved that life. I craved the freedom, the, the financial freedom, the time freedom, the ability to travel. I needed those things. And so I knew if I had to sacrifice up front, I'll do that in order to achieve that life. And so I went down there. I got the job. 
I started working from eight o'clock in the morning until five or six in the afternoon at my full-time position. I would get in the car, I would drive a half hour to the casino and I would work from six or seven o'clock until two in the morning. And I did that every single day I could. People used to think that I was nuts because they used to call off, I used to pick up their shifts. I would work so hard there that I would go through a pair of shoes in like a month or a month and a half because I was the hardest worker, I was the fastest worker, and I did everything I can because I was just knew what I was working for. It wasn't just work to me. I was working for something, and it made me just go absolutely crazy. So I started giving up all my time um, in order to start doing that, and 100% of that money, 100% of the money that I made, I saved. I put aside. It was my Amazon Dream Fund. It was to fuel my products, and I have a whole bunch of videos that I found on my phone uh, of me actually working that job and talking to myself. I used to talk to myself every night and say, listen, I'm going to have a story to tell. I'm going to have a story to tell. One day, I'm going to have a story to tell, and I'm going to help somebody else. Being in a bar back right now. One day, I'm not going to have to do this anymore. I'm just making this video now to show where I was because I know one day I'm going to have a story to tell. So you do what you got to do. Story to tell. Not part of the story. I'm going to have a story to tell. I am going to have a story to tell. You're going to see it. I'm driving home from work on a Saturday. 2.30 in the morning, 2.40 in the morning. I'm nothing. So, but I'm not going to stay nothing. I'm not going to stay nothing. I know I'm not going to stay nothing because I won't let myself stay nothing. So, I don't know. It's all a part of the story, I guess, right? You got a story to tell. I'm going to have a story to tell. And it just kept driving me every single day. And so, again, I didn't know how long I was going to do that for, but I was willing to do whatever it takes. And another night, I remember just just sitting in the cooler. I was I was broken, you know, lifting kegs all night long and, and walking around. I was sore. I had actually been doing it for a year at this point. I had no idea how much more I would have to do. You never know how much is left. Right. That's that's the chase. You keep swinging the hammer and you don't really see anything. But you don't know if that next swing is going to crack it wide open. And that's where I was at. And I remember sweating, sitting in the cooler my hands, my knuckles from being in ice all, all night and, and banging against kegs, they were bleeding. And I remember just having my hands, my head in my hands, I could still feel it. And I remember thinking, God, does this even work? How much more of this can I take? How much more can I do? You know, because because I'm, I'm, I'm at my wits end here, you know, but I thought if I could just if I could just get one product up and running. I can't quit on myself because the the 30 years I, was, I got was 30 at that point. The 30 years that I was living before was so painful. I just refused to live my life like that anymore. I just can't go back to that. So if I have to do this for 10 years, I'll do it as long as it takes to pay my dues so that I could finally get on the other side. And when I started going through that program, I started saving up all my money and I was able to launch my first product successfully in February of 2019. And then January 3rd of 2020, it's the infamous video of Joey leaving his work. It's been shared all over the internet. It's been in different ads and different things like that um, of me leaving my work. I recorded myself walking out of work and never going back. And I remember the unbelievable feeling of liberation of just, I, I'm living my life now based on something that I created. Nobody gave it to me. It wasn't handed to me. It was because I worked for it. It was because I built it. And now I was sufficient on myself. I was independent because of myself. The money I made was because of my effort, not what somebody else told me I can make. Or nobody looked at my resume and thought, oh, well, yeah, you don't have the credentials to work here. Nobody could tell me what I could get or have or do or share or give ever again. It was all on my shoulders. And I just remember feeling that emotion so much when I was walking out and I was recording that on my phone and it was one of the greatest times of my life. And I did that so that I can I can always have it to look back on, to remember where I came from. Because I think that's another big point. You need to remember where you came from. All of those things now, right? All those terrible things that happened to me, losing money, you know, depression, all of the things that I lost, the pains, the sacrifices, the failures, 
If it wasn't for those times, I would have never become the man I needed to be in order to achieve the things that I've now achieved. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller. I've been a full-time Amazon seller now for over two years. I am completely time-free. I could go wherever I want. I could do wherever I want. And I'm financially secure to the point where, you know, I live in a very nice place. I could go out to dinner. I don't have to worry about what the what the the bill is. You know, I'm not a millionaire by any by any means, but you know, I make multiple six figures a year and I have 100% of my time. So how much do you really need in order to just be completely and totally free? And I will eventually one day be a millionaire just because, not because of the money, but because I know what I'm capable of. I am now in reckless pursuit of my potential, not money. Money is a symptom. That money is a symptom of you just stepping into your greatness. You bringing out the person that you were made to be in the first place, that you were born to be in the first place. Right now, watching this, I want you to look into my eyes. I want you to feel this. You were born with everything that you need. It's It's been inside of you since birth. You have it right now, no matter where you are in your life. If you hate your job, if you're unfulfilled, if you're upset, if you're sad, if you hate uh, you know, your circumstances right now, inside of you, at this very moment, no matter how low you are, you have exactly what you need to succeed. You've always had it. You just need to bring that out now and share it with the world. Bring it out, you know, release that. Give yourself the permission to release it. And if you can't give yourself permission, take some from me. I give you permission to just be the person that you were made to be because that alone, being 100% yourself, will bring you the money, will bring you the success, will bring you the skills, will help you learn anything, but most importantly, take action to go get it. Nothing is going to land in your lap. You have to go out there, you have to grab it, and you have to take it. And it's okay to do those things because I feel like that's why life is so fulfilling for me now is because I have things to work for. It's not that I didn't want to work. I just wanted to work for myself. I wanted to work on my own terms. And so I made a uh, a promise to myself that from now until forever, the way that I make money, the way I make my living will always be from something I create and nothing that, you know, I have to, that is given to me and things like that. So, you know, I hope this story has inspired you. And now I've been, you know, again, I, to the point now where I feel like I, it's time for me to share. It's time for me to give back. It's time for me to teach because I remember where I was and all I wanted was good information. All I wanted was somebody to help me. All I wanted was somebody to show me the way to do it the right way. Cause yeah, I know that everybody has good intentions, just want to help their family. They just want to live a more fulfilling life. They want to be happier. They want to have better experiences. And now I need to help people to record that same video. I need people to be able to, to walk out of work and record that same video. And hopefully it could say, man, if it wasn't for Joey, uh, I don't know where I would be. Or if, if it wasn't for Joey's help, I'm not sure I would be here. Uh, you know, thank you for, I, I want to just al help alter somebody's life in a positive direction. That to me now is where my 100% of my focus is. And I'm just on fire for that. I'm passionate about that. But again, let the things that you're feeling now, your journey, it's meant for you. It's meant for you. And it's okay to go through the bad things. I went through so many bad things. I went to Tony Robbins and guess what? There were so many more bad things that happened. But this time, the thing that was different was my mindset. I knew that they were building me. I knew that they were building character. They weren't the end of the world. It wasn't, oh, woe was me my whole life. It's okay. I'll take that. I learned from it. I know that this strengthened me. I know that this is building me. I know I'm going to learn something for this. I know that when these things start piling up on my back, that greatness is right on the other side of it because you're going to, it's building me into the person that's going to, that's going to need these skills, right? And so, I hope that, that that could be you. I hope that you can just take a step forward. Always take a step forward, no matter what's going on in your life. Just always take a step forward. And if you can take you know any lessons from my story, it's that if you do things until, you will always be successful. That's what I was ready and prepared to do. I was going to do it until I was successful. I would launch products until I got a successful one. I would keep working until I made it. I would keep searching until I found it, right? So if you're trying to do anything right now, do it until you get that result. Just do things until and you will always be massively successful. So if you want to see more about my story, go ahead in my channel and make sure you watch that interview that I did, uh, my student success interview. I think you'll really like it. But I hope that this, 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 this journey, this timeline, the things that I've went through 
if it at, at, at absolute least, I just hope it inspires you. I hope that it shows you that you are great the way that you are right now. I am no smarter than I was before. I had all the intelligence back then that I have now. It's just the way that I viewed myself. It was the way, the things that I was willing to do. I was always capable. I just wasn't willing because I didn't know how to, how to take a step forward. Don't let those things paralyze you. You are capable of more than you even know or you can imagine. You have that inside of you right now. So I hope this video found you well. If you like this to support my channel, please click the like button, subscribe. I'm gonna be talking about things mindset, motivation, Amazon FBA, different tips and tricks that helped me to start a business. If you're specifically looking to start an online business, those videos will help you as well. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.